So, welcome to this class on uh, new science of human movement. So, this is part 5 uh, of the discussion on uh, primary motor cortex. Today's class we will exclusively be focusing on uh, the work of uh, Peter Strick, where uh, a group of neurons called as a cortico motor neurons. What are these? We will have to discuss what this is. These innervate different arm muscles through divergent projections with the uh, spinal neurons. So, first let us discuss what is corticomotor neurons. Those that have monosynaptic projections with uh, spinal motor neurons are called as corticomotor neurons. Uh, these are also called as uh, upper motor neurons. There is going to be a discussion later, but let us at least define this. Corticomotor neurons are those that have connections with motor neurons of the spinal cord are the spinal motor neurons right now let if you look at the evolution of these from mammals to primates to humans right in mammals these are present in less quantity so there are very less number of uh, corticomotor neurons in lower mammals such as uh, uh, rats, mice, etcetera. So, that means spinal motor neurons are receiving inputs from the cortex through interneurons in the lower animals. In primates, this number increases. In primates, for example, in macaques, there is a substantial number of uh, motor neurons in the primary motor cortex that project directly to the alpha motor neuronal pools in the spinal cord right. So, these are especially devoted to the distal upper limb function. So, or, an, or in other words wrist finger functions right. Humans there is an even greater number of uh, corticomotor neurons that directly project to alpha motor neuronal pools that control finger function. This is also the reason why if there is a lesion of uh, the upper motor neurons or in the primary motor cortex, it has a devastating effect for humans, but less devastating effects in lower animals. Okay. We will discuss the lesion cases later. So, here we will discuss the work of uh, Peter Strick, what is shown is the set of neurons that uh, innervate um, the muscle adductor pollicis. Here in this picture abductor pollicis longus and here in this picture extensor digitorum longus. So, this is about, uh, so that distance is about 2 mm. This direction is medial and this direction is rostral. And note this is in the specific area that is just rostral to the central celsus okay, or just anterior to the central celsus. Anterior to the central celsus you have primary motor cortex within the primary motor cortex the most caudal part or the part that is very close to the central celsus. So, what this shows is that there is a distribution. So, for this muscle the control or the neurons that control this particular muscle are distributed over a relatively large area 2 mm, 2 mm is a relatively large area in neuronal terms. So, you see that there is a great amount of distribution or actually more than 2 mm, a great amount of distribution of neurons uh, that control this particular muscle. Likewise, for a different muscle, see there is a great distribution and here there is an even greater distribution. So, what this means is that uh, there is both divergence and convergence. So, from a particular neuron or from a particular area there may be projections to multiple muscles let us call this muscle 2, call this muscle 1 that is let us take a different color and I am going to you know take this muscle 3 and so on and so forth. So, there is an amount of divergence and there is also convergence right in terms of uh, the muscle. So, there is a uh, origin of uh, control at multiple sites 
and convergence is to a particular muscle. So, there is both great divergence and convergence from the neuronal uh, site to the muscle or uh, the alpha motor neurons that control the muscle in the spinal cord. Okay. So, that is also seen here for example, here what is shown here is the muscle field of uh, 4 different muscles. So, here is uh, input coming from a cortico motor neuron and that is branching into 4 branches and it arborizes into muscle fields of 4 agonists. So, these muscles perform the same mechanical action. So, one cortico motor neur neuron innervates all of them and simultaneously activates multiple muscles. Okay. So, they perform approximately the same uh, mechanical action. What is not shown in this picture is that through inhibitory interneurons for example, through gabergic neurons these, uh, these cortico motor neurons also inhibit the antagonists. So, let us suppose these are flexors these 4 muscles. So, I am going to call this 1, 2, 3 and uh, this is the fourth muscle. Let us call these 4 let us assume that these 4 muscles are some flexors right. The cortico motor neuron also innervates interneurons that inhibit or produces a negative activity on the extensors thereby releasing the extensors when the flexors want to flex. Input from multiple clusters of uh, cortico motor neurons. So, here is here are different clusters of uh, cortico motor neurons. They project on to multiple motor neuronal pools of extensors. Okay. So, there is divergence there is divergence here and what is also uh, shown is that through inhibitory interneurons here these are inhibitory interneurons they also inhibit the activity of the make uh, of the flexors of the antagonists. What is uh, not shown is that these flexors are also receiving uh, inputs from different clusters of uh, cortico motor neurons that is not shown and they are also inhibiting the extensors and so on and so forth. Okay. So, what we have learnt is that there is both uh, convergence and divergence from the cortico motor neuronal pools to the spinal motor neuronal pools. Okay. So, in this class so we have discussed the work of uh, Dr. Peter Strick and uh, so with this we come to the end of this class. So, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.